and we're live so hi everyone and welcome back to my channel for those new here my name is nikki i'm an author and editor and i post videos here on youtube about writing editing reading and all the other things i love uh, today we are doing a reading vlog because it is the end of the month and it's time to wrap up all the books that i've been enjoying during july or not enjoying as the case may be mostly enjoying thankfully uh, this is going to be quite a long one today actually um as opposed to my uh film and TV one, which was over in less than 15 minutes just now, because I didn't have much to say. But I read, I think it's something like 27 or 28 books we've got to get through today. So it's uh, been a bumper reading month. I'm excited to share my thoughts on some of these with you, but I will try to keep it see reasonably succinct. You know, um, I don't want to drag on for too long and bore you all to tears. So uh, without any further ado, in that case, I will carry on. I've got my uh, bullet journal in front of me with all the notes of the things I read and what I thought about them. So uh, we will kick straight off. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Neon Empire by Drew Min. This was a book I received as an arc. And the basic premise of the story, it's set in a future world where social media has kind of taken over um, and popularity and celebrity is uh, almost a currency now. And you have to stay popular and keep getting hits and likes and things to uh, maintain your lifestyle and things like that. Uh, there's a bit of a sort of thriller mystery aspect going on in the background as well. Uh, I gave it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed the sort of dystopian look at the future, um, much of which you could really imagine based on the way social media is heading these days. But for me, I thought the ending was a little bit um, of a letdown. I, I kind of wanted something a bit more from it and I'm not going to say what or why because I don't want to spoil the book but uh, this is definitely an interesting read, worth picking up but I just felt there was a few missed opportunities in the end um, where things could have been done a little better. Next up was The Eloquent Screen by Gilberta Perez. This is a book I received from NetGalley and it's a non-fiction title and it's basically Perez uh, talking about the way in which film um, works on our minds, on our emotions. Uh, it was a very interesting read. However, it was highly academic, um, quite majorly, um, to the point that it did feel a little bit dry at times. I don't recommend this just as general reading for film fans. I think you do need to have some kind of film studies academia background to fully appreciate it. And I mean, I did film studies um, briefly in university, just for one year as part of my English course. So I kind of do know the terminology and um, bits and pieces, which helped. But even for me, it, it was a bit plodding at times. So um, definitely fascinating, but I would recommend it for uh, real diehard academic film fans, as opposed to just general film watchers, if you see what I mean. Uh, but I gave it four stars because I think it had some really interesting points to make. Um, it just could have done with being a little bit more accessible to the average reader, perhaps. Moving along, the next book I read was an arc I received from uh, the publisher from Anna and Unwin here in Australia, and it was Fortune by Lenny Bartolin. And this was another four star read for me. The basic premise of this book is uh, Napoleon enters Berlin in, uh, I think it's 1806, um, he conquers Prussia. And from there, events spiral outwards and several characters who are involved in that day uh, go on to tell their stories and it, it basically covers a century and travels all around the world as these different people branch off and make lives in other places and their their children carry on and things uh, it was absolutely wonderful concept and it was really well executed as well i i come i kind of wanted a little bit more of an emotional connection at times which is only the, the only reason i gave it four stars not five I kind of felt that I didn't really fully engage with any of the characters because there were so many and we kept changing time period and um, moving on before I'd really established a bond with any of them. But definitely um, an amazing concept and as I said, perfectly executed. I mean, it all flowed together brilliantly. Uh, so just as a, you know, an exercise in skillful writing, it's definitely worth reading for that alone. Um, but yeah, as I said, four stars. Next up, another four star read actually, was The Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Marino Garcia. And this was a net, a net galley read for me. And this was a really original story and it's a kind of a paranormal um, mystery slash romance um, based around the sort of Mexican Incan Aztec um, folklore and mythology. Uh, it was enjoyable, it was entertaining. 
I, I liked the characters. I loved their interactions, particularly um, between the, the two, two main characters. And definitely, if you're looking for sort of folklore-inspired tales that aren't the standard fare, um, then this is, is this is one I would highly recommend you check out because it, it's, it's nicely written, it's something a bit different, and um, as I said, highly entertaining reading. The next one, we're sticking with NetGalley for This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Um, Mohart. Um, I'm sorry, I think I'm pronouncing that wrong because of my terrible um, scribbly writing. I can't read how I've written his name. Um, and Max Gladstone. Uh, apologies if I pronounced your name wrong, uh, Amal. Um, four star read, again for me. This was an interesting piece. The concept is that there is a time war of sorts going on between two factions. They both have time traveling technology and they're both going back and forth in time trying to uh, change things and trying to outdo each other essentially to tell their narrative. But two of the um, key players, um, one from either side, they begin a correspondence and eventually they fall in love uh, in a sort of uh, weird way. Um, I say a weird way. Um, all I mean by that is that it's it's a kind of interesting relationship because it, it doesn't come from much and they're just exchanging these letters um, that they don't really meet. They see each other in passing. So it, it's kind of a, um, a romance that's more um, cerebral, shall we say, than anything else. Um, what was I going to say? I've completely lost my train of thought now. OK, it's fine. Uh, this was a really beautifully written work. It's a very lyrical piece. Uh, the prose is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you were just pouring over these wonderful sentences. But at the same time, I found the story was a little bit underdeveloped. I had so many questions. Um, there wasn't that much world building. I kind of wanted to know what had led to this, um, how these factions sprung up, a little bit more about the background of these organisations and the, the characters. Um, we got their emotional state really well through this beautiful lyrical prose as they wrote their letters and as events unfolded. But I kind of just didn't feel I got to know them properly because I didn't have that background on what had made them this way, who they were, and more particularly the background of the world in which they were operating, which would have been really helpful. So I, as I said, I gave it four stars simply because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and again, if you if you just want to sort of um, masterclass in lyrical prose writing, then this is a book to read. But I did think that they could have made a little bit more of it than they did. Next up um, is Vengeful uh, by V.E. Schwab. Uh, now you all know that last month I absolutely adored Vicious and Vengeful was no exception. Uh, this sequel gets five stars again from me. It's a great continuation of the story. There were odd moments when we got um, sidetracked. Or I say sidetracked because for me the whole story is about Victor. So if Victor's not on the page, that's a sidetrack. Um, but Marcella, who's one of the new characters in the second book, uh, obviously gets a lot of page space. And there were a few sections where we were hanging out with her quite a lot and Victor wasn't on the page for a while, which I was like, where's Victor? Get back to Victor. But um, even so, um, Marcella is a great character. Uh, wonderful to see Eli and Victor back again. And we, I actually kind of enjoyed Eli a little bit more in this book because I was absolutely a Victor fangirl in the first book. But in Vengeful, we get to see a bit more of Eli's background, which makes you understand where he's coming from a little bit more. So you do sympathise with him in a way you couldn't quite in the first book. So I found that fascinating. Um, I understand uh, V.E. Schwab is uh, contemplating a third book. Uh, so I really hope she's going to go ahead and write that because, I mean, Victor Vale is such an amazing character. Um, Vicious is my absolute favourite book of hers that I've read so far. And I've read nearly all of them now. So... Um, I definitely recommend Vicious and Vengeful if you haven't read them. It's it's kind of a superheroes, but done in a really dark um, shades of grey, um, not not Fifty Shades of Grey, but uh, shades of grey way. So it's not necessarily black and white. Who's the goodie and who's the baddie? Um, uh, which I really liked that moral ambiguity about the series and about the characters. Next up. Um, I should talk about, while I'm talking about B.E. Schwab, I should move on to Victoria Schwab, her YA pen name um, for The Near Witch. Um, this is one I borrowed from the library. And it was a four-star read for me. It's a really nice concept. It's it's kind of a fairy tale, a slightly darker fairy tale. Um, but 
again, I, I can't read my own writing. It would really help if I didn't scribble. I, I do only have a very tiny column um, just to, um, what on earth did I write? Oh, generic. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so it's a good concept as a dark fairy tale. Um, there's a witch, there's a mysterious boy who comes to town who's getting blamed for all these children disappearing. And uh, a young girl who has powers of her own is also um, is trying to clear his name because she doesn't believe that he did it. But although it's a good idea and it was nicely executed, the prose was enjoyable, it was entertaining and readable, I did feel it was a bit more generic than much of V. Schwab's other stuff, which does have a bit more of a element of uh, originality about it, shall we say. But how it, this was, however, her um, first book, I believe. Um, so it's kind of going back to where she started and you can see how she's developed as a writer since then. Uh, there was a bit of an insta-love feel about the relationship between um, our hero and heroine. So, so yeah, it was definitely fascinating. It was a good read, but it's not one of her best works, but you can see how she kind of built on this and managed then to go off and develop her own style and really get some original ideas flowing. Uh, so jumping back up my list, next up was another net galley read, The Girl in the Tree by Shebnam Ishigudzil. Um, again, I hope I said that correctly. He's a Turkish author. Um, apologies if I mispronounced. Uh, this was a four star read for me. The basic premise is that uh, a young girl decides that she's had enough with society and climbs a tree and decides she's going to live there. And she begins a relationship with this uh, young man who works in the hotel um, where the tree overlooks the building and realizes she's up there. It was a really interesting piece, um, very poetic. I don't want to say too much more about the story because um, it would be spoilers, but that's the basic premise. And I thought it was a fascinating idea. It was nicely executed. Uh, we do jump back and forth in timeline a bit. And we also have this um, element of narration where we're not quite sure if we can trust our narrator because she'll tell us something in one chapter only to disprove it or um, confess she was lying in a few chapters later. So it's really fascinating from a psychological point of view uh, on that regard as well. But definitely, um, it was a four star read for me. It's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something a little bit different uh, with a sort of literary uh, fiction slash magical realism kind of flair about it. Next up uh, was another NetGalley read, Where the Night Reigns by Emily Lucadamo. And this is the third and I believe final book in her series. This was a three star read for me. I really loved the first book in this series. The second book I was a little bit more ambiguous about. I didn't dislike it, but it, I didn't love it as much as the first. And this one is probably the weakest of the three. Um, it does tie up the storylines that were started in the first two books and introduces a sort of third arc, um, brings in a few more people as well just to wrap everything up. But I kind of felt that the people brought in knew we didn't get enough time to get to know them and the people that were coming and finishing their arcs from the first books i kind of wanted to spend a bit more time with them than we did so three stars it was good to see an ending good to see it all wrapped up how the story finished but i did think it was the weakest um and i i think you know that first book kind of hit the high point and then it, it kind of moved down from there um but you know if you like paranormal uh romance uh lgbt characters then it's probably worth checking out but it's just not one that I'd absolutely rush out to recommend to everyone. And you have to excuse me, I need a bit of a water break. Too much talking from me. Uh, next up, another net galley read, and this one was a graphic novel, and it is Moth and Whisper by Anderson, Hickman and Dylan. And this was a four star read for me. Um, the basic premise is Moth and Whisper are two um, sort of superheroes they're they're both kind of master spies thieves um kind of thing and they've gone missing and they have a child uh she's a uh, oh, they are a non-binary um person so we'll refer to them as they and um they are trying to uh, find out what happened to their parents essentially and they've picked up some of their skills and they have a arsenal of uh secret weapons ways to disguise themselves uh, and they're trying to infiltrate the bad guys to find out what happened to their parents. It was a really fun story, a uh, great LGBT character, and I definitely like to carry on reading into volume two to see what's going to happen next. So if graphic novels are your thing, and you'd like graphic novels with a great LGBT protagonist, um, a lot of um, espionage, spying, super duper gadgets, then this is a book for you. 
Next up, I read Dark Mother Earth by Christian Novak. And this was uh, another NetGalley read and another four star read for me. It's a really fascinating tale. It took me a little while to get into it. It took the first sort of third of the book or so. But once we started going back into the guy's childhood and finding out what had made him the way he is at the start of the book, then I became more fascinated with it. It was an interesting tale of uh, how childhood trauma, um, events of the past can affect you in your adult life. And um, really they're ruining his current relationships, essentially. Again, I don't want to say too much and spoiler it, but if you like literary fiction with a bit of a darker psychological edge, then this is one that you'd probably want to check out. Next up, I'm going to jump to, um, I'm jumping about a bit in my book because I actually have some I want to group together at the end because it makes more sense to talk about them all at the same time. You'll see why when I get there. But we're jumping now to another NetGalley read, Elements of Fiction by Walter Mosley. And this is a book um, basically looking at writing fiction, but it's not so much a how-to guide and more uh, the author's sort of, um, his take on it, how he feels about it, what he thinks about it. Um, it's so it's not it's not a useful book in in terms of if you're someone looking for writing how to kind of guides um, this isn't for you, but it was an interesting read. Um, interesting to see how he's interpreted fiction over the years, how he views different aspects of it. So four stars. It's it's interesting for writers, but not necessarily useful for writers if you see what I mean. Next up was a book I received as an ARC from Pam Macmillan here in Australia, and it is The Astrid Notes by Tanya Bashford. And once again, uh, another four star read. There's been a lot of four stars uh, across the board for me this month. This is a YA contemporary novel set in the music world. We have Astrid, who is um, a classical singer, and we have uh, Jacob, who is more of an indie pop rock kind of singer. Um, they shouldn't get along, but they end up uh, meeting and forming this relationship because they've both got problems going on in their lives and they offer each other support in that. It was a really sweet and fun love story. I thought the romance developed at a pretty believable, reasonable rate. The only thing that bugged me about this book was there were some factual errors. There were a few factual errors to do with some of the music and things mentioned. And there were also factual errors to do with Doctor Who. And all this stuff was pretty easy to check up and look up and correct. So uh, it kind of bugged me that they made it through into the final copy. Uh, Doctor Who fans will be pulling their hair out a bit probably. Uh, there was only a couple of mentions, but it, it did jump out at me because I do watch Doctor Who. So I was aware that they were wrong. So um, definitely though, if you like YA contemporary, um, really sweet, cute little love stories. Um, if you're interested in characters working in the music industry, then this is a book you'll want to have a look at. Sticking with books received from Pan Macmillan Australia, I had another arc two from them this month, which was From Here On Monsters by Elizabeth Breyer. Now, this was another uh, four stars. Yet again, it's a really fascinating read, and I've got to be a bit careful about spoilers here, so um, I may not be able to say too much about it. But we basically have the character who is uh, running a bookstore, and uh, they end up making friends with this illegal immigrant, and at the same time, there were all these possible weird occurrences going on, all connected with this codex that the uh, this bookseller comes across. Uh, are there monsters in the roof, actual monsters? Um, is this codex real? Uh, it seems to be talking about um, a mystery that happens in the future uh, compared to when the codex was written. Um, and again, as, as you can see, it's very hard for me to talk about this without spoiling it. But it was interesting and different, um, kind of weird <laughs> at times, but it's kind of a literary fiction mystery with magical realism thrown in. One thing that did bug me about it a little bit was that there was a bit of a message in the book. And I don't mind there being a message, but I felt it was pushed a little bit too much at times. Um, I don't like being preached at uh, when I'm reading a book. I don't mind them putting forward a, a thought, an idea, uh, but I if it feels too preachy, it does put me off. And that did happen once or twice in this book, which is why I gave it four stars. But definitely, if, if you're looking for something a little bit different, it's kind of a noir feel about it as well, um, then uh, this is one to check out. Next up, another NetGalley read was The Return of the Incredible Exploding Man by Dave Hutchinson. Um, this was my least favourite book of the month, unfortunately. I could only give it two and a half stars. I liked the premise, but I thought it was... I thought there were 
two issues with this book, actually. Um, one of them is to do with the marketing, which I'll mention first, because it's kind of pushed as a superhero story. And it does get that way a little bit, but only really in the last quarter of the book at most. Up until then, it's just a contemporary drama, really. Uh, so it's being really put forward as a superhero tale, and that doesn't come in until a few chapters, really. Um, so I thought that marketing-wise, that was a bad move because you're going into the book with an expectation that isn't met. Um, the story itself also had really bad pacing. Um, it was a great idea. I liked the, the concept behind the story. Um, this guy ends up going in, he's supposed to be writing a book about this science project that's going on being funded by this uh, billionaire. And uh, he gets caught up in an accident that takes place um, at the um, project headquarters, which is where the superhero um, bit comes in. But the beginning was so slow and we were just plodding through this drama. Um, there were several pop plot points introduced and characters brought in and that then just disappeared without explanation. They're just like forgotten. Um, and yeah, that, that, that final quarter when the superpowers and stuff did it finally eventuate was quite fun, but you had to slog through 75% of the book to get there. Um, and I think, I think there was too much early on and too little at the end. It could have been much better paced um, and that would have worked better with the marketing of it as a superhero book if that element had been brought in earlier too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's probably not one I'd highly recommend, but two and a half stars because I did like the idea and I thought there was great potential there. It just wasn't realised. Next up, sticking with NetGalley, was The Girl at the Door by Veronica Rimo. Um, this was a three star read for me. Now, this is a contemporary book and it's looking at the idea really um, based behind the Me Too movement. So we have a, a woman who's pregnant. Um, her, um, they're living in this utopian society, I should say, first. Um, and they, they had to be granted access to this special community uh, in which they're living. And the a guy uh, got the girl in and they're, they're kind of together. Um, she's pregnant. And one day she opens the door and finds a young girl there. Um, and... The, the partner is a teacher and this young girl says that while she was his student, um, he raped her. And that begins this um, whole drama about who's telling the truth um, between them as the community decides um, how they're going to judge this man and um, what they're going to do about the situation. It was intriguing, but I kind of liked the fact that we didn't necessarily say one way or the other who was telling the truth. Uh, I think there was some ambiguity there, which I liked because... I think absolutely if someone comes forward with a, a claim like that, it should be taken seriously and investigated. But at the same time, we are kind of crossing a line sometimes now where people are being vilified the second a claim is made before it's actually been proven. Um, and I liked that uh, we didn't really get a sense in this. We were left to decide for ourselves who was telling the truth with, about whether it was consensual or not. Um, so that was, that was interesting. It was an intriguing idea. However, I, what I didn't like was none of the characters were ever named. It was just like he, she, the professor, et cetera, uh, the girl. And that left it as quite a distance from it. And I, I assume that was on purpose um, so that we're meant to be looking at it as this could be anyone in the situation kind of scenario. But it did create a lot of emotional distance. We didn't really come to care about the characters because we didn't fully get to know them because we were just kept at this remove from them all the time so three stars it was an interesting read an interesting idea uh, but i think it could have been slightly better executed uh next up another net galley read drawing the head for artists by oliver sin now this was a five star read for me it's just a quick little book but i thought it was a really good resource um, some great ideas some wonderful tips nicely laid out and easy to follow I won't say more about it than that because it is just a, a short little book. But if you are an artist, it's worth taking a look at for sure. Next up, sticking with NetGalley still, uh, Superhero Thought Experiments by Gavala and Goldberg. So this is another non-fiction piece. And it's basically a series of essays looking at uh, superheroes and how we can compare them to ideas of philosophical thought about right and wrong, uh, etc. It was a very interesting read, but... Um, kind of like Eloquent Screen, it was fairly heavy going. Um, I would say that you could read this if you were just a sort of general superhero fan. It didn't matter if you didn't know all the comics they're mentioning because they did give you the background of the story in each one they were referring to. 
And you also didn't necessarily have to know a lot about philosophy because, again, they did outline the theories uh, in each chapter. But I would say that having a vague idea of some of the principal comic book characters for DC and Marvel and having a vague knowledge, at least, of some of the principal uh, thoughts of people like Kant, Hume, uh, Plato, uh, Descartes, um, definitely would help you out if you're going to read this. Um, as I said, it's not absolutely necessary. You could still read this book and follow it, but it would help. So for me, this was a four star read. It was a little bit heavy going at times, but some of the things they were putting forward in their um, arguments and in these critical essays was very interesting. Next up, sticking with NetGalley and nonfiction still, The Secret Life of Bones by Brian Switek. And again, a four star read for me. This was a really interesting idea and it kind of looks at the uh, idea of bone, um, both in terms of um, dating, in terms of historical research, uh, in terms of anatomy, um, in terms of religion even, um, about how people have used bone um, as religious symbols uh, or metaphors. It was um, a little bit technical at times, um, particularly when he gets into some of his paleontology discussion. Um, which I know nothing about. There's a lot of big terms um, and ideas that I hadn't really come across before. Uh, but once you got past, if once you got past those I those bits, those ideas, it was actually a really fun and interesting read. I mean, I, I loved the section on the discovery of Richard the uh, Third. I also discovered some other things that I'd never realised before, like the fact that apparently Instagram is a huge platform for selling human bones. Who knew? Um, but now we do. We all know now because I've just told you. But uh, yes, yeah, some fascinating um, ideas and concepts that I'd never come across before. So four stars for me, definitely worth checking out uh, if that sounds like the kind of thing that interests you. Next up was a book my mother bought me as a gift, uh, Figure Drawing for Artists by Steve Houston. And this was a four star read for me. It was uh, a good book. It was well presented. I didn't necessarily um, think all of his uh, style tips uh, about how to approach things work for me. I found other ways of doing things that I think are more suited to, to my style. But it's definitely had a lot of interesting things to do. Um, in particular, it looks at paintings by some of the great masters, Rubens and the like, and looks at deconstructing those uh, to illustrate the points it's making, which was very fascinating and um, uh, definitely makes you think about uh, how you're forming uh, the figure um, how you're working with line and movement and gesture and things like that. Next up, uh, ducking back to NetGalley for Monster of the Week by F.T. Lukens. Now, this is a sequel to the Rules and Regulations of Mediating Myths and Magic. Uh, what a title, eh? Uh, which I read last year and really enjoyed. And this was a four star read for me. I don't think it was quite as memorable as book one. But it was still really enjoyable. It was great fun. I enjoyed spending time with the characters again. Um, I liked the plot and the way it developed in this one. And I definitely continue reading the series because it is highly enjoyable. Um, our main character is um, bisexual, um, really great representation. And I just adore him as a character. I think he's so sweet. And I definitely do recommend uh, if you like LGBT characters, paranormal romance, um, a lot of fun and humour thrown in as well, then definitely check out this series by F.T. Lukens. Next up is a book I bought for myself, which is Draw with Jazza, Creating Characters by Josiah Brooks. Um, I love Draw with Jazza's videos here on YouTube, and I wanted to get his book because I find a lot of his tips really helpful. I gave this four and a half stars. It's really, I mean, it says it's more about how to create character ideas and designs and how to draw. However, there are aspects of um, drawing tips and that included. So it is a nice blend of, um, of tips for would-be artists as well as uh, would-be character creators. Uh, the artwork and the layout inside is gorgeous. It's really easy to follow. Um, a bit of humour, um, a bit of fun and overall and a really nice resource if you're looking to draw uh, comic book style artwork. And I need another drink because I'm talking so much. So, we are heading towards the end, I should tell you, we won't be too much longer. Um, next up is a book I borrowed from the library and finished just last night. Uh, good timing, eh? And that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. And this was a four star read for me. Uh, this one appeals because I, I love superheroes. So I was interested in reading this YA superhero tale. I thought it was a fun idea. It's fairly well executed. 
I liked that the relationship between um, our two characters, between Sketch and Nightmare uh, or Nova, um, hasn't um, developed too quickly. It's not been quite insta love. There's insta attraction, definitely, but their relationship is developing slowly. I like the idea of her trying to infiltrate the, her opponents and then sort of being caught, really, um, torn between getting revenge and um, the fact that she likes some of these people she's now working with. So, yeah, it's a full star read for me. I'm definitely going to go on and borrow book two, uh, Arch Enemies, and see how the story continues. So if you like uh, YA fantasy, you like superheroes, I do recommend checking it out. It has some um, fun moments, um, a little bit predictable at times, but if you like kind of that Romeo and Juliet, um, opposite sides falling in love kind of uh, idea for romance, then enemies to lovers, if you like, uh, it's worth checking out, definitely. Uh, so that brings us nearly to the end. Um, we're just going back to the books that I missed on purpose so I could group them all together for you. And this is because um, I'm talking about the continuation of my reading of Grishaverse by Lee Bardugo. So if you remember last month, I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, absolutely loved it, or more accurately, absolutely loved the Darkling, um, fell absolutely in love and lust with him. And so I continued uh, during July with Six of Crows um, and Crooked Kingdom. Um, I should say all four of these are borrowed from the library, but I will be buying copies later to add to my own library, my own collection. So Six of Crows, first of all, uh, this was four stars for me. I didn't take to this quite as much as I did the Shadow and Bone trilogy. That one I fell in love with straight away. Six of Crows took me a little while to get into, um, but by about halfway I was hooked. Um, I do like Kaz Brecha as a character. Um, I'm not as in love with him as I am with the Darkling, but I do I do like him. I do enjoy him. I do love his um, relationship with um, uh, Inya. Is it Inya? I ah, can't remember names. Yes. Um, and I think, yeah, it just, it just took me a little longer to settle into the world building than it did in the first one. But once I did, I, I was hooked. Um, it's kind of a sort of fantasy Ocean's Eleven in a way, because Kaz is getting together this team of um, thieves and cutthroats and uh, a sort of motley crew, if you like, uh, all of many of whom hate each other in order to pull off the heist of the century, if you like. Uh, so if you're into that sort of Ocean's Eleven, um, kind of style, but with a fantasy bent, it's definitely for you. Uh, obviously from there, I went on and read the sequel, Crooked Kingdom. Again, four stars I gave it. I thought it was a good continuation. I liked the way the story went. Um, I liked the character arcs. And um, this time, I think because I was already a little bit more involved, it didn't take me so long to get into the book as it did with the first one. Next up, I read The Language of Thorns, which is Lee Bardugo's collection of uh, fake fairy tales, if you like. Um, I mean, not that we're saying fairy, any fairy tales are real per se, but these are fairy tales that she imagines the characters in Grishaverse would have grown up hearing. Uh, I liked that there were different ones from different parts, um, from different kingdoms, uh, different parts of the world, uh, whether Ravka or Kirsch or uh, Shu or anywhere like that. So um, I liked that blend. Um, and I did think they were really nicely written. They felt like real fairy tales, uh, if you see what I mean. Uh, so I gave those four stars. And finally, to wrap us up this month, I'm going to talk about King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. Now, this is an interesting work because you could read The Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom without having read Shadow and Bone, but there is no way you could really appreciate King of Scars unless you've read both Shadow and Bone trilogy and The Six of Crows duology because it draws on elements uh, from those stories, from both series and characters from both series and brings them together. This was a five-star read for me. I really loved getting back uh, with Nikolai. Um, he is a brilliant character, he's such fun. And um, I can't actually tell you the big, big reason why I loved this book so much, because it would be a huge impossible spoiler. But um, there is a particular um, awesome return of a character who I loved in earlier books. And um, I enjoyed being back in Ravka after spending time in Kirch with um, Six of Crows and Kaz and that. But I am super excited to see where this story is going to go when she finishes this new duology off, uh, which I'm hoping we won't have to wait too long. I'm hoping it would be I'm hoping it would be next year. I haven't heard anything definite yet, but um, I did love this book. And in fact, I've memorized the last uh, sentence or so. And I keep walking around the house like saying it randomly, driving my husband mad. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely. If you're a Grishaverse fan, um, this is like the ultimate book that brings together everything so far. 
So on that note, I think I have finally wrapped up all of my July reads. I'm really uh, looking forward to Lee Bardugo's got a new book out, uh, starting a new adult series. Um, I think it's not till about October. Um, so I will be watching out for that, obviously, and getting that as soon as I can. And I'm actually up to date with all my books. I've, I'm up to date with all my NetGalley ones. I'm up to date with all the library ones I've borrowed. I've got a few in transit coming for the library from the, the network. So I will have some more to read there soon. And I'm waiting for, I've got uh, a book arriving in the mail um, any day now. I'm kind of just sitting, waiting, waiting, waiting for it, which is the Still Prints, the first volume of Still Prints, the graphic novel prequel to Shades of Magic by the Schwab. So I will be reading that soon, as soon as it rocks up. And I've also ordered the uh, manga of Death Note, uh, which hasn't shipped yet, so it's going to be a few weeks. So that might get into my August uh, wrap up. It just depends how soon it arrives and how soon I can read it. Uh, but that might be a September one. But one thing I should also say is that uh, I have finished my Goodreads reading challenge for the year. Woohoo! Uh, 150 books down. In fact, I think I've finished 154 now. So um, super smashed my goal. Uh, I think I'll probably head up towards the 200 odd mark pretty easily. So, um, so yes, um, I have actually read Vicious and Vengeful twice in the last two months because I've, as well as reading them for myself, I've been reading them to my husband in the evenings. We'd read a few chapters. Uh, he'd get a sort of um, personal audio book, if you like. So I've marked those down as read twice, which I think is fair. Um, he's really enjoyed them. He loved them. And we might do some more um, audio book style reading to him in the future. We'll see. But yes, my goal is smashed. Um, I don't think I crossed any more off my world list. Let me just double check for you before I wrap up. But I'm pretty sure that it was June when I last read. Uh, oh no, of course, The Girl in the Tree um, by our Turkish author uh, takes off uh, Turkey for me. And I've actually realized because Lee Bardugo was born in, in Jerusalem, I can actually cross off Israel as well by reading Grisha verse. Because uh, I'm doing it on where they were born. Um, they don't necessarily have to have lived there all their lives. So that crossed off uh, two more for me in my world challenge. And on that note, I think I have told you everything there is to say for July. As I said, it has been a bumper reading month, but I'm not quite sure how August is going to go yet. Because as I said, I haven't got anything waiting at the moment. So uh, it may be an opportunity perhaps to do a few rereads. We'll see. Uh, We'll find out, you'll find out when I come back next time uh, what I have to say on that score. For now, I'm going to close. I've, it's gone 10 a.m. here now. I've got a few things I've got to get on with for my day. I'll be back again uh, in August, of course, with my usual uh, schedule of vlogs on Sundays. I won't be doing a drama talk with Alina this month because she's just recovering from some surgery. But we will be back in September when we're actually going to be doing uh, a bit of a talk about the Schwab's Vicious, which I'm really looking forward to. So we'll have dates for you on that um, soon, as soon as we know them. In the meantime, I'm going to close, but I will see you all again uh, very, very soon with another vlog. Bye for now, everyone.